Hey, what's happening gang? Welcome to your 8th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about if statements. Alright then, so what is an if statement and why the hell would you want to use one? Well, in basic terms, an if statement allows us to control the flow of our code based on certain conditions. For example, if that condition is true, then I want to perform this bit of code. If it's not, then I don't. So it follows this cause and effect model. And this happens in real life as well. If I'm tired, I go take a nap. If you defecate in public, you get arrested. So we're taking this cause and effect model and we're pushing it right into Python. And we're saying, okay, at some point during this program, I want to check a certain condition. For example, is the age variable equal to a number that is 10? If it is, then I want you to execute this portion of code. If it's not, then I don't want you to execute that portion of code and we'll do something else instead. So it's putting a fork in the road, if you like, and branching off into two different directions based on certain conditions. So that's what if statements are all about. And we're going to do a couple of examples now. So the first thing I want to do is get the user involved. I want to ask the user for the age and store it in a variable. So we'll say age is equal to input to ask the user something. And we're going to ask them to enter your age. All right. Now, remember, when we enter data over here in the console, it's stored in this variable as a string by default. Now, we might want to use it as an integer, and that makes sense because age is a number. So to do that, we need to perform a bit of typecasting. And we know how to do that. We know how to turn something into an integer. We just use the int method. So we say int, and then open our brackets and close our brackets after this thing. So anything within the brackets, i.e. the result of this input right here, is going to be turned into an integer then it's stored in this age variable. Cool. So now we have our age. Let's do some checking if age is equal to something or greater than something. So the way we do an if statement is by saying if, then we place our condition or our expression right here. What do we want to evaluate? Well, we want to check if the age is less than 10. So this is going to return either true or false right here. If it returns true, then we're going to execute a portion of code. If it returns false, we're not. Okay? So that is the expression. Now, what we need to do is place a colon after this to denote this is the end of the expression. And now we're going to enter a code block that will execute if this is true. So the code block goes right here. What code do we want to run? And notice this thing. The code block is indented. It's not flush to the left. This wouldn't work in Python. Python expects the code block in an if statement to be indented, okay? So now what are we gonna do if this is true, if age is less than 10? All I wanna do is print a message to the console. So I'll just say, you are young, strange one. All right, so let's give this a whirl. What I'm gonna do is say Python, and then I'm gonna run the if underscore elif dot py file. So enter your age, I'll say nine. Then we get this message back, you are young strange one. And that's because this has evaluated to true because nine is less than 10. So if we enter something that's over 10, let's run this file again, we'll say 11. Now we don't get that message printed to the console. And also if we enter 10 itself, we still don't get that message because 10 is not less than 10. Make sense? Cool. So that's a basic if statement. Now there's more to it. We can add on something called elif, all right? So what does this do? Well, it lets us check another condition. So if this is false and this doesn't run, then we can move on to check another condition, okay? And this is different than just coming down here and saying, okay, well, I wanna do another if statement. Just imagine this scenario. We'll take out elif for now. We'll check if age is less than 40, all right? And then underneath here, we do something. So imagine we enter an age which is five. Then we're gonna run this code and this is gonna evaluate to true and it will print this. Then it's gonna evaluate this and it will print this as well, it would do this. Now, what if we only want one thing to happen, either this or this? This won't work, right? So that's why we'd use an elif. So we're saying right here, if we type in elif, then we can say age is less than 40. Now what's gonna happen is if this is true, then it's going to print this. And it's not even going to move onto this. It's just going to skip it and carry on down the code down here. 
okay? But if this is false, then it moves on to the next condition, elif, which stands for else if. So what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna print something else out. We'll say print uh, the fire in you is strong, strange one. Do not ask me why I'm doing Yoda style quotes. Do not know. Um, so let's run this. Now we'll enter our age to be 11. And now we get the fire in you is strong, strange one. So this is false, skipping it. And this is true, therefore printing it, okay? Now there's one more thing I wanna show you, which is an else. Oh, by the way, you can add on as many elifs as you want. You could say elif age is less than 60, you know, and do something else. You can do as many as you want. But for now, I'm just gonna say else. And this is the third little keyword I wanted to show you. So what does this mean? Well, it means if this is false and this is false, well, I tell you what, I just want you to default to this code block right here. This is kind of like a catch-all, right? Else. So if none of these conditions are true, we're gonna execute this. If one of these conditions are true, we don't execute this. So in this catch-all, we're just gonna print something out here. We're gonna assume that over 40, and we'll say something like, you are wise beyond, uh, can I spell, yep, doubt, strange one. All right, okay, so let's run this again. This time I'm gonna say 45, which is over 10 and over 40. Now we get this message, you are wise beyond doubt, strange one. And I'll just run this one more time and say six, and we still just get the one message, cool. Let's just clean this up a bit, I'll say clear. Okay, cool. So that is an if statement, right? A basic kind of if, elif, else statement. I wanna go through one more example now. So I'll comment all of that out, and in fact, we'll comment this age out as well up here. And now what I wanna do is check if a user is a meat eater or not. So I'm gonna create a new variable called meaty and say is equal to input. And then I'll say, do you eat meat? And I want an answer which is either gonna be yes or no. So we'll let them know we're expecting a Y or an N. All right. So either Y or N is gonna be stored in here. Now then we'll do another if statement to check whether a user enters Y or not. So we'll say if, and then meaty is equal to y. Remember, we have to say this in a string because it's stored in a string. We can't just say is equal to y. That doesn't really mean anything. It has to be a string. So we're checking if meaty is equal to y. And this equal to is a comparison operator. So before we had greater than, but that doesn't make sense, or rather less than, but that doesn't make sense in this example. We're checking if what they've entered is equal to y, and it's two equal signs to do that. It's not just one equal sign, because this is um, an assignment operator. We'd say something like um, age equals five, right? That's an assignment when we use one equal sign. To check if something's the same, we used double equal signs. So that's our condition, which is either gonna return true or false. If it's true, then we want to do a code block right here. So we want to give them a meat menu based on this because they've entered yes, they do eat meat. So I'll say print, and then here is the meaty menu. All right, now we can just do an else, and we can presume they've put no or something else, but hopefully no, if this is not true right here because they've not entered yes. So now down below, we'll just say print, and here is the veggie menu okay so let's run this and see if it works oops not clear python if elif do you eat meat yep here is the meat menu and um, we'll run again do you eat meat nope here is the veggie menu okay so there's two examples now of if statements now i said to you before i might just run through a few different uh, comparison operators with you and show you what they are so let's do a comment up here called operators and then down here another comment so We've already seen less than, right? To check if a value is less than something. We can also use greater than. As well as that, we can use equals, which is this thing right here. We've checked if a value is equal to something. We can also do the opposite of this, which is not equal, exclamation mark, and then an equal sign. So this right here means is meaty not equal to y. So if I entered y in there, then meaty is equal to y, and this would be false. If I entered n in here, then meter is not equal to y, this would be true. Make sense? Cool. We can also use is equal to or greater, and we can also use is equal to or less than. So for example, if this was equal to or less than, if we entered 10, then this would be true. Whereas before, 
if we just did this, then it wasn't true. So there we go, there's if statements in a nutshell. We are gonna be using them more frequently as we go through the rest of this playlist.